the screen layout a little bit, get things like move the log off and the time zones and things down here. You can also select your local time zone. If you're in a time zone other than the time zone your cloud server or your company server is on, this makes it really easy for you as a user to set your own time zone for uh, history records and activities you're scheduling. Pretty neat feature. But what I was going to talk about was these new widgets, they call them, for the dashboards, are now built in HTML5 rather than Flash. And the reason they did that is so that they're compatible with browsers that don't support Flash, which is a lot of them actually I'm learning. And a lot of the mobile devices, in fact, I don't know of any, that support Flash uh, animations and Flash objects on a website. And so they use HTML5. And that way you can use some of the same code uh, on mobile applications. And like I said, it works on browsers. I'm actually using Safari today. So it works on browsers other than Firefox and IE. Now, what I've been told is that the Flash-based dashboards are still there. And they first try to render themselves with HTML5. And if it doesn't succeed, it will use um, Flash. So it does still work with the old Flash, but HTML5 now. So that's all pretty good stuff. Like I said, we talked about um, the icons are new, some changes to the general interface, which I think are all good. The other thing I'll say generally, I can't really show you this, but I can tell you is that it is also quite a bit faster. They've utilized the S data port for things like picklets and lookups. Um, and they've utilized it uh, quite a bit more in this version 8 web client than they did in pre previous versions. And a lot of that, that's not the only reason, but there's a lot of performance improvement. What we've, what we've noticed and what's kind of, you know, the, the, the typical is that the screen changes are anywhere from two to four seconds typically with the old web client, old being 754. In version 8, they've gotten that down to one or two seconds. Now I'm running this whole entire system on uh, a laptop, so this isn't going to be as good as it gets by any means. But as I've said, we've installed it on some uh, Amazon cloud servers, accessed it remotely, and have noticed a significant performance increase. Uh, so it's not quite as lazy of an application <laughs> as it was previously. Things are quite a bit snappier, which is all good. Everybody always wants it to go, go faster. Uh, we talked about the dashboards. We have some general layout differences, which we talked a little bit about, the log off screen and time zone screen. Also new is the list management area. And I'll show you that here. I'll go to the accounts view and then go to all accounts, because I think that's where you're going to see the obvious differences. I'm going to move a few things off my screen. So go to the list view. And you'll notice, if I go to all accounts, for example, they've added a user option to be able to check a box. This is really handy in these list views if you want to build groups, ad hoc groups or do bulk actions. So previously, you had to hold the control key or the shift key. And it seemed like you get halfway through your list, and you'd make a mistake, wipe the whole thing out, and have to kind of start all over. It seemed to always happen to me. Not sure why. But now you can just, like I said, check the box, and then apply by right clicking. Well, what is it that you want to do with these records? For example, you want to maybe merge them, add them to a group, save them as an ad hoc group. So just kind of a nice usability or interface change uh, that they've added. And you'll see that through all the various uh, lists and so forth um, within here. And that's going to be kind of the theme of today is lots of polish and lots of incremental improvements in the interface, which is all good stuff. Oh, I guess while this just happened, I'll talk about this too. They have a new freestanding um, alerts window. And so this pops up whenever you have any uh, unconfirmed activities or alarms that are going to go off or have gone off. And you'll actually be able to deal with those in the same manner, check the boxes and say dismiss them all. Uh, you can click on all these different hyperlinks, go to the account, 
open up the activity. All these blue underlined areas are um, hyperlinks. You also notice if you hover over these that their phone number pops out, uh, which is all just nice uh, user interface enhancements. And so rather than having a different screen that you had to go to, you do have this little temporary alert pop-up. And you can do things like complete activities and even delete activities right from this window. So kind of a little mini uh, little mini alert interface or activity interface, which I think is pretty cool. You can click on it and kind of temporarily get rid of it if you don't want to deal with the alerts right now. So that'll bug me uh, every couple minutes if I don't deal with them. But you can see there's four of them in there, and all I've kind of done is minimize it uh, at this point. So another nice feature uh, that I think is a big improvement. OK, um, the other thing I'll talk about, but again, probably can't really show you, is arrangements of grids and groups and lists views are now sticky. It used to be if you moved a column, if you widened it or shrunk it, or if you did something like said, I don't, I don't want this particular feel, I don't want the subtype, you could hide that. But what would happen is, and you can drag the arrangement of these columns around, that's all fine and well. Except when you would leave the screen and come back, it would always go back to the default layout. It wouldn't remember any of these personal personalization touches you made, which is really kind of annoying to me that it does that in 754 and older, 80. All this stuff is sticky, stays uh, in some local cache data within your browser, how you personally have your different list views set up. And the other thing you've added is you can right click on, for example, all accounts. And you notice I messed around with the layout a little bit. You can revert that layout back to out of the box and have it forget all the changes you made if you like the default layout better. And you can also say, I want this layout. I love the fact that it goes account and city and state and phone. You can make this become the default layout for any new groups. So it used to be that uh, the all accounts, I think it was, was always the layout that new groups inherited. But now you as a user, you can pick your own uh, once you've arrived at a layout that you like. And so uh, another nice usability feature. Uh, you can double click on an item to select it. You no longer require to drill through. So for example, if I wanted to go to inside computers, I'd have to click on that hyperlink in the grid. So I had to find the column that had the account name. You don't have to do that anymore. You can just double click on the row anywhere, and it's going to take you to the detail view for that account record. And again, all the list views and grid views behave this way. Uh, so pretty, pretty intuitive. It kind of makes you wonder, well, that should have always been there. And that's true. I agree. That sort of common sense computing. And now that is there. They've spent a lot of time just polishing up, cleaning up, and kind of making everything behave in, in I think, a more normal fashion. Um, filters, they've made some improvements to how filters work over here. You see counts. You see, like, for example, one of one, 26 to 26. So it shows you how many are in the group and how many of those you have selected. You can clear. Um, just this filter group, or you can edit the items in the filter group with these new pop-up windows uh, rather than having to scroll through long lists of these. So some nice improvements they've made there. They've also changed and improved the Manage Groups button. Uh, so now you can do things like uh, show hidden ones, uh, just check the boxes here. You used to have to go into each group and hide them. Uh, individually, now you can kind of manage the whole thing here at once, and it's also got uh, a search function. So it's actually part of a speed search. And if you're you've used sales logic a while, you know you can you can have hundreds of groups that you've accumulated. So it's really kind of hard to find them sometimes the one you really want to use. So now you can search for them within this uh, particular box. Okay. Um, Let's see, you talked about groups. We talked about the right clicking, the filtering, the personalization, that sticky, reverting uh, back. And we showed you the account view. 
Okay, let's take a look at the detail view. Let's do a quick lookup of Abbott here. So we always pick on Abbott Limited in our demos, which we'll do now. And we'll go to the Abbott Limited record. And what they changed is with all these lookups for the entities is they let you do lookups in the detail view. It used to be that to do a lookup, it would always revert to the list view uh, to do it. And then you'd be stuck in the list view, and you'd have to go back to the detail view. Where, where now, when you do a lookup from a detail view, you stay in the detail view. And the temporary group gets built um, over in the group list view. If you have that activated, you can hide that, as you know, too. Uh, so that's another nice, uh, I think, detail that they've changed. The other thing that's really nice, and let me find another view that has more records. OK, the Notes and History tab and all the other grids that are one to many, tickets, activities, attachments, opportunities, contacts, they're all now scrollable. They're not paged. I hated the paging. So in the older systems, you'd have to page through you know, 10, 20 records at a time and wait for that to repage. And it was really kind of slow because it would reload the next chunk of records as you page forward and page backwards through all this data. Well, now you just scroll up and down, and you see all of the data in one big, long list. And so uh, that's and you see up here how many records you're showing in the particular visible window. So if you want it, of course, you can make this bigger uh, and even hide this detail view and have this really long scrollable uh, tab. They've also added what they call this notes area. So any of the grids that had a comments box or a notes box, you'll see throughout version 8 they've, they've added this notes window. I know it's been there in the notes history tab in previous versions, but now it's there in all the tabs that have notes or uh, a, a comments type box. It shows you that over on the right hand side and they're all now scrollable rather than uh, the paging style, uh, which nobody really liked. OK. Um, preferences, again, are sticky across sessions. So if I make changes to the tab order, or the, t the layout in the tabs, or the width of these columns and things like you saw me kind of monkeying with and getting settled into the screens I like and how I want them, that stuff all stays. Even if you log out, leave, come back the next day, log back in, it's all going to be there uh, because it's all stored locally in a, in a little cache database in your browser. OK, um, we talked about, oh, here's another nice one, uh, the lookups that have changed a little bit. I also like that they've redone the ownership and account manager field. Those lookups are now, instead of that goofy uh, expanding folder where you click the plus sign and the little folder would open up and you might find another little folder in there. You'd have to open another folder. Now you can just say, well, show me the users, show me the teams. And so it quickly allows you to uh, move uh, between teams, users, departments without having to open up these expanding folder trees because let's face it, 99% of the time, you probably pick a user. And so there's all your users. And uh, so they've added that and made that a lot nicer. Same thing with account manager. They've changed that to not having to be uh, folder-based. I can just pick my users from a list all by scrolling up and down. Good stuff. Um, you can also do things like contains versus starts with. So much more robust lookups. Uh, and easier stuff to use. It changed a lot of the lookups and combo boxes. Look at how nice and big this, for example, this industry is. It used to be you get like three <laughs> entries in a little top down window, and you'd scroll, and you'd scroll, and you'd scroll, and you go too far, and you got to go back, and I lost where I was. Well, now they have nice, big, roomy uh, pop downs and pick lists and drop downs. Uh, seems much more modern and usable, uh, and a whole lot less scrolling around to have to get to what you were looking for.
So I, again, nice little things like that. And they're also really quick because the data is being pulled from SData rather than through the, the actual client portal. Uh, SData is much faster and more efficient. It's a very lightweight uh, way to do that. New date time picker, which is kind of nice too. So if I schedule a new activity, for example, I'll just say we're going to schedule a new phone call. They've made these screens roomier too. You notice it's much bigger, a lot more room for notes and so forth. And they've also changed these to a much more modern, uh, normal, typical kind of date picker function, which I really like. And the calendar and clock functions are better. So all those controls are changed anywhere you see uh, those types of clock calendar pickers. Good stuff. OK, keep going here. Um, they keep repeating enhanced styling. I agree, very stylish. So scrollable grids, we talked about that. Oh, here's another new feature. They've really elevated the relevancy, if that's a word, of resources. And so before, a resource, which could be a conference room, a projector, uh, or something you would use or reserve, some resource you would reserve for a meeting, um, they've actually um, added some new capability for that. I'm um, not sure why I'm not getting it here. <laughs> OK, told you it could, could have a bug in it, or I'm just doing something wrong. But we can, do, we can show you that as we keep moving forward here. Next would be the notes history tab, which we talked about. Um, Lead can now be part of a merge form, which is pretty cool. Or I should say, merge forms can be part of leads. They used to be stuck uh, on contact entities. And they've made that now customizable so that merge forms can be associated with any other entity, including leads. Uh, so that's a new function of the uh, desktop integration. And merge forms, opportunities. Activities and calendaring, this is what I wanted to talk to you about. OK. So managing activities, they've made a lot of improvements on that. So I'll show you that real quick here. We'll say, show my calendar, which we can do right from our little alert window. That's pestering me as it should. I'll close it down again here. Go away. And go to, I think it was, We'll add a couple users here. So right away, you're going to say, oh, OK. So finally, you can add multiple users to the calendar view. You are correct. You can have up to four, which isn't perfect, but it's better than one, which you could have in uh, the previous system. So we are going to show several people's calendars here. I think I got all four of them here. Yes, I do. OK. So it allows you to display, I thought there was a particular month, it was June, there we go, that had a lot of data on it. And it's all color coded. So as you can see, based on the color of the selected user, like blue is this beautiful pastel blue, rhymes with blue, Lee is a little darker, and the administrator is olive green. So orange is Lee Hogan. OK, so through the color coding that they chose over on the right, it determines whose activities you're looking at. And as a user preference, I told it I'd like to see my completed activities, which are history. That's why these have a little green checkbox. They're already done. I did them. But then you can see that throughout, and sprinkled throughout the weeks here, there's several uh, repeating meetings, which have the slashes and phone calls and so forth. And then if we look at it in the weekly view, of course, you see more information uh, displayed out in the calendar. Now, watch what happens here. You notice that this Burke Grill Company uh, relationship building meeting is set from 5 to 7. If I grab it and move it, you notice how the clock is changing. And I can even drag it across to a different date. So as I'm holding it and leading it around the screen, the time slot that it's going to grab if I let it go is displayed live and in real time. So if I say, well, it's now Thursday from 1 to 3, let it go, I just reschedule that by dragging it around. It's really hard to do with the old calendar because you really never 
quite knew where it was going to land. It seemed like you had to fuss with it a lot to get it to land on the right time block. But now it shows you that. You can also see you get the phone number, the notes, the account, the contact, the opportunity, and the ticket. If all those things are linked to it, you're going to see all those right here in the little thumbnail. You can also go to any of these linked entities right from this little right mouse button menu. And you can complete it right from here. You can open it to edit it or just delete it. OK, I'll go out on a limb and say the calendar user interface and features are dramatically improved. Uh, so, so high fives to Sage for all the changes they've made there because it's significant. And if you're like me that lives and dies in this thing all day long, even these tiny little changes add up to efficiency and, and happier users. How uh, dare I say better user adoption, all those things. That's all great, wonderful. I'm glad they did it. Uh, so there you have it. OK. Um, availability, that's new. And so not only could I select a user from the calendar, but if I look at an activity itself now, there's an availability tab that literally shows me, OK, it's lose me but is Dan available at the time? So it shows you a little thumbnail of his availability uh, right here, which I think is uh, pretty slick. And you can add new users over here with the plus sign. And uh, so you can pick a new user that you want and add them, and then it'll throw uh, Manuel on the list to see if he's available um, in that time slot. So I like that as well. OK. And so moving to the next thing we're going to show you is they rebuilt the reoccurring dialog. It wasn't terrible before, but it's even better now. So I'm just going to skip past all that because we don't have time for all that. Lots of changes in the user options. Um, they give you a lot more granularity in uh, what you're going to be able to adjust and tailor and so forth. Uh, for a user, some defaults and things can be changed for activities and alerts uh, rather than <clears throat> having to uh, dig around to make these default settings as a user. They've just rebuilt these screens to make them a little simpler. OK, we talked about the alerts, the little pop-out window that's going to continue to nag me here to say i got to confirm or have an alarm going off, all good. Uh, better handling of events and timeless activities. The hover summary calendar color coding is very nice. And lots of user selectable calendar options, which we're looking at right here. And the dropping and dragging is really the best I've ever seen. I don't know how it could get any better. And I'm not just saying that. So I like that. OK, next would be the. Um, it says it's keyboard friendly. And I do get people who like to use the keyboard rather than the mouse. It came from the DOS era. And so there's a lots of keyboard shortcuts. And in fact, it's out of the scope of today's demo. But in the technical V8 demo sneak peek, um, there's actually a right mouse button keyboard tab stop builder functionality that's new that lets you optimize some of that stuff. But uh, I don't know what I'm talking about there, so I'm going to leave it at that. OK, next up is the security manager. So I'm going to kind of venture into a couple of administration add-ons or niceties, changes, good stuff. They've added um, what's called a security manager now. And so there's really two things we're going to talk about. One is the security manager, and the second is the ability to um, build or create new fields on the fly through the web client. In previous versions of Sales Logic, to make simple changes, like add a field to the screen, was never simple. It was amazingly difficult. There was a lot of steps, many steps, took a lot of time, and it was quite a procedure. That's not a knock against Sales Logic. It's a highly, highly customized tool. But it was not easy to make easy changes. There was no easy changes. 
now they've added the ability to actually uh, create um, forms. And there's a forms editor. Where is it here? Scroll down. Oh, I almost skipped by the security manager. Sorry about that. I wanted to show you that first because that's part of it too. You can have field level security, as you know, in sales logic. So you used to have to control this in the other desktop applications. Now you can you can choose any field in the database and choose whether it's read, write, read only, no access, right from this field security manager manager tool. And so that's pretty neat. So they've made this more uh, accessible. Well, it is accessible through the web. Now that's new. But the next thing I wanted to show you was the form manager. And so the form manager is a way to rapidly, within a couple of minutes rather than a long time, to make a simple change to a screen that's already there. Like I want to hide a field, or relabel a field, or uh, create a new field, or what have you. I'll just show you that real briefly because this is a pretty powerful um, new feature of version 8. Without having to be a developer, it can actually make simple changes, believe it or not. Should get here soon? Maybe not. Come on, form manager. Of course, it worked every time I tried this before the demo. And maybe today it, it will not. Hmm. OK, fine. Oh, here we go. Probably asking a little too much of my little old Dell laptop, but that's OK. There we go. So this is a list of all the forms, all the screens in sales logic. And so you can just pick the one that you want to pick on. And we're going to choose the account details because everybody knows what that looks like. So I'll say, check the box. Click on account details view, which as you know is the top half of the screen when you're in the account area. And so we're waiting again for that to get me there. OK, here we go. So this is a WYSIWYG editor interface. So I can do this live. Everybody can stay logged in. Nobody has to leave the building or go home early. You can say, OK, I want to add a field or make a change to one of these out of the box fields. You could say, we don't use industry, don't need it, don't want it. You can just get rid of it. Or you can insert a new row for a new row of fields or a new column, which means instead of three columns, you can have four columns. You could say put it to the left or the right of where I already am or above or below, or I can hit the delete key and just get rid of the industry field. So if I click in there, You'll notice down below I get some properties. What's the caption? I can change the caption. I can have a pop-out tooltip, something like this is where you type in what they do. So if your users hover over that field with their mouse, that pops out. You can make it read-only right from here. Uh, you can go into this advanced control area. Is it visible or invisible? Uh, is it mandatory? Is it required? How long is it? Can you edit it? Is it enabled? So lots of different. Uh, developer type controls, what pick list is it bound to, uh, and so forth. And then there's the layout. Where, where literally is it on the screen? You could either change where it is by changing the columns and row address, or you can just drag it around. And you'll notice, hey, if I want it right under the main phone number, I can do that and let it go. And guess what? I just made a change in, what, three seconds? Maybe four. Okay. Where before, if I had to do that, I'd have to crack open the application architect, dig around for the form, find the form, go through many, many steps to get there. So you get the point. We're thrilled, obviously, that they've made this now. Simple changes are simple. And if I save it, I'm not going to do it because it'll change my demo. <laughs> save it, the change will be there. Next time a user refreshes, and off you go.